This is Jason Kelly of The Kelly Letter. In this video, I will show you how to use the site calculator to run your signal plans. You access it by logging into the subscriber site and then coming across the top menu here to the calc item. Click that and you'll come to this page you see on your screen now. Start your plans by reading how to begin your plans in the user guide. It will take you through the basics and give you some options for starting, one of which, which is my recommended approach, is this allocator tab, which makes it easy for you to sync your plans with the letters by simply putting in your, your bond fund, your stock fund, and then the percentage that the letter currently has in stocks, and then your plan will become the same as the letters, and you can just follow along from there. We'll start this demonstration with the calculator tab. That's the one that generates custom signals specifically to what's happened in your plan and is the one I use each quarter to generate the, the letter's own signals. It starts with just the name of your account. This is for your reference only, not used in any calculations. I like to call mine 3SIG for the 3SIG plan and then I keep track of the quarterly actions in my email history. Round to whole share amounts is just what it says. I prefer whole shares over fractional shares. If for some reason you would like fractional shares, you can toggle this over to, um, to no, and then you'll get fractional shares instead. But I, I like to leave it at yes just to get whole numbers. The quarterly growth target is per plan. 3SIG uses 3%, 6SIG uses 6%, and 9SIG uses 9%. You can adjust these if you're doing the other plans by clicking the other numbers here. 3% stays bold just to remind you that the original 3% plan uses that. You can either click the numbers or slide this along like that to get the percentage that you need. Next field is stock fund balance after last quarter's action. If you pull up on your screen the April 2021 issue of the Kelly Letter, you can see the numbers that I'm going to put in. In this case, the letter's stock fund balance after the last quarter's action in January of 2021 was $911,865. And you can actually see it right here because I already used the calculator to run the letter's quarterly calculation. So there it is, 911865. The bond fund balance was 429694. You can also see that in the April 2021 issue. New cash added to bond fund in current quarter was 3931. Pay close attention to this field. All new cash into your plan goes into the bond fund. Your contributions and any distributions you get from the funds go into your bond fund. You do not divide new cash up on the way in. For example, some people think, well, I'm contributing $1,000 a month, so I must put 80% of it into the stock fund and 20% into the bond fund because those are the base reset allocations. Wrong. You would put the entire $1,000 into the bond fund. In, in the calculator, it will be divided in half and also in the spreadsheet if you're using one of the legacy spreadsheets. The full amount of your contributions goes into the bond fund and then half of their value is added to the signal line. That creates the sweet spot of the pace of drawing in your money to benefit from stock market growth but leaving enough buying power to take advantage of dips. You, however, put in the full amount that you contributed to your bond fund during the quarter. If you are doing $1,000 a month, for example, you would put in 1,000 times three, that'd be the three months of the quarter, and put 3,000 in this field. You'd probably have a little extra too because of distributions from your funds. Bottom line, all new money goes into the bond fund and you put the full amount of that new money into this field and the calculator will handle dividing its value in half. Stock fund shares currently owned. In the letter, it was 9858. Stock fund current closing price was 11009 in this quarter. Bond fund shares owned 4925 in Q1 2021. And the closing price then was 8480. Desired limit price for stock fund action. That's what we're looking at over here. I leave this blank. What this comes from, you can see here, it says, for example, 110. Sometimes people like their orders to fill at whole numbers, or they try to, to fine tune the order fill they're going to get in order to create a precise 3% growth for the quarter. It's understandable to want to do that, but it creates unnecessary stress. I have seen it all where somebody will look at this and they'll think, huh, the current price is 110.09, and this is going to be a sell signal. 
what if I could get 111? Or what if I could get 112? I'd be doing even better. So I'm going to put in a limit order to sell at 111 instead of the current 110.09. And then you get the Monday, the market opens, and IJR is is down at 109 or 108 or 105. I doubt it would move that far, but you get the point. It goes at a lower price. So then on Tuesday, you're thinking, ah, oh, geez, what do I do? Chase it down and go ahead and sell it at these lower prices. Now I'm out of sync with what happened with the letter and so on. If you leave this blank, you do not input a desired limit price. It will simply assume that this is the price we're using. This becomes the desired price, which you will almost certainly not get. What, you're thinking? Yes, you will almost certainly not get it. And the good news, my friend, this calculator is set up to deal with that and take away even more market stress from you. That happens down here. Did stock fund order fill at desired price last quarter? No, the default is no, because it's almost always no. The odds of you getting precisely this desired price, that is the calculated price, is very low. It does sometimes happen, but almost never. So this defaults to no. And then in the next field, what was the desired fill price last quarter? You can put in what it was. And that, that's where you put this in. One quarter from now, you'd put this 110.09 in here. In this case, it was one quarter ago. If you look in the April, sorry, yes, that's right, the April 2021 issue, you'll see that back in January, our order filled at 92.50, but we wanted 91.90. That's because back in January, right here, this number was 91.90. That's what we put here, 91.90. One quarter from now, we will put in 110.09 as our desired price. And that's it. You click calculate, and you get what you're supposed to do. Stock fund shares to sell at 110.09. 1,364, and bond fund shares to buy, 1,771. There's our stock fund current balance, bond fund current balance, our current allocations, our current signal line value. That is the 3% growth plus one half of new contributions, new cash to the bond fund. That's already been handled for you. Current quarter stock fund surplus is $150,173. That's the amount that will be generated by the sell order from your stock fund. After these actions are taken, this will be our stock fund balance. This will be our bond fund balance. And the resulting allocations will be 6238. This is shown in the letter. And so what you can do then, well, actually, before I get there, let me just point out down here is where you put in your email address. Click send here. It'll pop up here and say results sent. And then you'll create a nice history of the actions you've taken over the quarters. Looking back to this allocation, this 62% stock allocation can be used here on the allocator tab to make your life easier by just following along with the letter. Something else I want to point out to you is this right up here. Inputs are preserved between tabs. So you can click over to the allocator and your familiar inputs from the previous calculator tab are already here for you. Same number of stock fund shares owned, same closing price, same number of bond fund shares owned, same bond fund closing price. And now, looky here, you can put in that 62% stock fund allocation that we know we're going to get after taking these actions. So if you were looking in the letter, you would see at the bottom of the 3SIG portfolio summary in April 2021 that the stock bond allocations after this quarter's action will be 62.38%. You put that 62% in here, click calculate, and you are done for the quarter. Look how magical that is. You are eagle-eyed, so I'm sure you have noticed that the stock fund shares to sell at 110.09 by this method gives a different result from the calculator page. This shows selling 1,394 shares. The calculator page showed selling 1,364 shares of the stock fund and buying, not 1,810, but 1,771 shares of the bond fund. That's because this is not exact. When you, when you do the allocator approach, you're not using actual figures from your account. You're using the percentage that the letter is going to achieve after its actions, and you're approximating that. The good news is it's close enough.
you can follow along with the letter and relieve yourself of the stress of standing on your own. It's emotionally satisfying. It's easy to do. It takes, what, five minutes by putting in just, just these four parameters, stock fund share zone, stock fund price, bond fund share zone, bond fund price, and letters allocation to stocks after this, and boom, there you go. And same thing, you can email it to yourself here. This is also the way for newcomers to start, very low stress. You come into the letter you, uh, as a new subscriber, you pull up the most recent issue shown right on the subscriber site homepage, you look at the current allocations of the plans, and you use this allocator tab to sync your plans with the letters from the get-go. You don't have to try to decide if now is the right or wrong time to move into the market. Uh, it, it always feels wrong. It always feels wrong. Every newcomer talks about how the market's going to crash, or keep crashing, will crash. The Wall Street Journal swears it'll crash. It never feels right. So relieve yourself of that stress by just following along with the letter and let the math handle all the indecision for you, or more to the point, produce zero indecision for you, and you can be right on board with this fantastic approach to the market, which wins over time with none of the stress from indecision that goes with all other approaches to the stock market. That's it. I hope this video helped you, and I thank you for subscribing to The Kelly Letter.